the famous writers, you think, oh yeah, I can write a shopping list or you know, a text or you know, a, a postcard or whatever. You know, you're, you're familiar with that aspect of writing. But if someone asks you, can you draw? You go, I don't know. I can't even draw a straight line. You know? <laughs> like that's what the majority of people say, oh, I don't know. You know I don't, I'm not Michelangelo. You know, who was talking about Michelangelo? You're just asking if you can draw. You can, and you can draw, if you, if you recognize a stick man, without even having to draw one, you can draw, because otherwise, why would you know it's a stick man? Do you know? Mm -hmm. So drawing is not something for the few, but it's something for everybody. Mm -hmm. I was once in, a, uh, uh, I, had, I was in Holland, and a guinea pig bit me on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that to someone who doesn't speak German, because I was in, uh, German, I'm German, so I was in Holland, the, and the, the Dutch doctor couldn't understand what I said. <laughs> Meerschweinchen, you know, guinea pig. He didn't speak English, I didn't speak English then. He didn't speak, I, I didn't speak Dutch. And, but he knew it was an animal, you know. So he drew a dog. He said, no, no, not a dog. Uh, smaller, you know. So he drew a mouse. No, no, bigger, you know. <laughs> and then he drew a rabbit and said, no, no, ears. Ah, and he drew a guinea pig. Just, just a, and he was a doctor. He could draw, you know, and he could draw with just a couple of lines, but I recognized to be a guinea pig, so we understood each other. Uh, but I think we underestimate the value of drawing. And, um, you know, someone asks you for directions, you say, oh, it's like this, and you go, there's a, you know, you're drawing, you know. So, um, I have a few exercises which um, I've written on a piece of paper, which you can do yourself. I'm not going to do it now because we don't have time to do them all. But it's simple that, um, you know, one thing that you do all the time is write your name. You're completely, if someone asks you to write your name, you can't even read it. You're so familiar to write it. It's your signature, you know. Most signatures don't look like, oh, you can read, you know, every letter. So you're used to making spontaneous, self-expressive marks, right? Just writing your name. So I have a couple of exercises in that which I'd like you to play with when you get home. Uh, to do with writing your name, all right? And if you know someone who likes art but who's afraid of it, these are great exercises to get someone into drawing. So that's what we have to do. Now, I'm going to talk briefly about the method or the process that I use to make these monocasts. These are made, uh, they're, they're made of concrete, and they're made, any idea how they're made? You must have an idea. So, there's a clue here. Hmm? Mold? Yes, a mold. Mm. Now, what was the mold made of? Sand. Sand, yeah. But how do they make the mold out of sand? Put sand in the box and just dig a hole, yeah. That's it. That's how they were made. That's how this was made. So, you know, then of course when you make something big like this in sections, you have to think, okay, if I make this bit like that, then I need to add and draw a circle to connect the next one with the next one, whatever, you know, so you draw a different shape to connect it. But basically, it's a hole in the sand, and you dig it out, and you fill it, in this case, with concrete. But concrete takes rather a long time to set. So I brought some plaster, and so what I'm gonna ask you to do is to uh, either get to these, and they're already, they're already, uh, I've just filled them in, they're uh, already shrinking because the water is leaving them, you know, so. Um, <clears throat> What, what, there's a few things that I need to say, just so that you don't accidentally destroy something someone else made. Um, the temptation is to just press something in. But it's two things. One is, you're not really creating something, you're just pressing it in. So now, whatever that looks like, what you press in, I mean, your face, you're not gonna get that because it's actually quite soft, your face, and this is not that soft. So, uh, but if you press your hand into it, you're not creating a hand, you just, creating a, a handprint, which arguably is not that creative because, you know, uh, it's a very complex form, but you have nothing to do with the design of it when you do that, right? Now what I'm going to ask you to do is take one of these implements, there's spoons here, and the spoons have two ends, so you could use that end to dig out, or this end, or both, or either, um, or you could use another implement but I found the spoon, a little spoon, perfect. For, these are all done with spoons. Um, so 
it's a perfect implement because you, you can dig in and you're also excavating, you're taking it out. And you're not pressing because when you press, you're dispersing and <clears throat> if someone is doing one beside you, you might damage the one beside you by pressing into it. So for simply in order not to do that, if you could just excavate. Now there's another, if, if you find this, um, if for any reason you don't feel like doing that, there's another thing you can do. That is the same idea, same process, but just slightly different materials. What have I got here? Marzipan? <laughs> Could be marzipan. No. Just lump, lumps of clay, okay? So a much smaller project would be to take this lump of clay, take a bit of wire, and use the wire to scoop out a negative form. The, the advantage of clay is that it, it doesn't collapse so easily, so you can easily carve something out, but it's, you know, I'm, I don't have so much clay for you, so they're going to be just small things. But there, you, you can make a lovely little form in a piece of clay, or you can make a form in a piece of sand. It's your choice. And uh, this is another thing, just to show you the variety, and it's another thing I made, the same process, um, and yeah, a little frame. So the possibilities are endless. What I would like you to do is, because like Tessa was explaining when she was doing her drawing of faces, the tendency is when you draw a face, you put the eyes too high. The tendency when someone's making a sculpture for the first time is, they think in terms of, oh, I'll make a square and make it thick. No, you still got a thick square, but it's not really a sculpture. You, sculpture is three-dimensional. Like, a circle might represent a sphere, but a sphere is in space. A circle is just flat. And if you give a circle thickness, you don't get a sphere. You get a disc, a, disc, a flat thing. So what I would encourage you to do is make it a self-portrait. Imagine, you know, you could just put the face into the sand, you know, so the nose is further in and the eyes are further up, and, but the, chi the, the forehead is further out there than the eyes. And, you know, just think, use your brain, because you can't check it until afterwards. When you say, okay, I'm ready, I'll pour some plaster into it, and then when it comes out, you'll see what you've done. And there's nothing you can do, it's no longer so. <laughs> we'll have a laugh, but it's also very interesting because it's that thing about our perception, you know, what like, we think we know and what we actually do. Like it's you not... thought that that nose was just a normal nose. <laughs> <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> so, any questions? You, you're happy to give it a go? Yes. Yeah. So, do you? How did you do that with the hole inside? You just kind of did a, a loopy part. You just did. You well, just dug a loopy hole. Well, they're, 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 yeah. that's this, um, this one was done upside down because the nose is bigger, so it makes yeah. more sense to have yeah. come in this yeah. way, you know. Um, but yes, I, I just uh, I left a bit of sand there, and uh, here I just didn't put plaster there, you know. But didn't put cement there. So yeah, it gets complex. But we don't have to get complex. Right now, it's complex enough just to think of your face either in a piece of clay, a little miniature, or your face, your head. What, what's your mix for the concrete? Um, what I did with the concrete actually is very interesting because I do it in two layers. Um, normally, you will never make a mix of concrete with too much water in this one because it, it just doesn't, it doesn't uh, last. Uh, it breaks. It comes apart. The concrete needs a certain amount of water, the right amount of water, which is very little. But if you have a sand mold, you can make a slurry, a very slushy mix. So that I do the first layer with this slushy mix, and then the sand absorbs most of, most of the water. So it, the, the concrete that ends up setting sets with quite a small amount of water. Mm -hmm. And then I do another layer with a proper mix of sand, you know, sand, 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 sand and cement. Yeah. Sand Stones, if you want to make it strong, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if you break the line, it's usually three and one, isn't it? Three. Yeah. Yeah. So what would, yeah. what would your mix be? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Something and like I mean, that. even uh, if you're putting stones in it, the stones take up a lot more volume, so that um, you can make a, 
and links of yeah, four to one because the, 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 the cement <laughs> didn't have to be in too yeah. many cracks. Yeah. So. Um, I'll take that and put it back there. Oh, uh, I was going to bring yeah. And the sand in the box that you've created over there, yeah. so that's just a little bit of water in the sand? There's a bit of water in it. Now, there might be too little water in it by now. It's very, um, it's very warm, as we know. And if you, if you uh, have a look there, you can see there's a crack developing between the sand and the... So, before you start, I'm going to press this down a little bit more. At least, it's packed down. Okay. And then... Uh, work quickly because it's drying out and as it's drying out it can collapse. I'm sure you've played in the sand on the beach, you know, if you're living in a seaside town. And we've got a bit of water, we're just not pushing a bit of water. Putting water on the top, no, it's not going to do it. You need to mix it and it's too late. So go for it. Um, perhaps try not to undercut it too much. Don't go in small and go out wide like this, it's just going to collapse. So go in more like a V, like a, you know, and do like, you just know. Front of the piece. Yeah, do, do yeah. this. Or you can go quite far in, but just don't go come back in, you know. Don't yeah. go. Yeah. Alright? Yeah. My dyslexic brain. <laughs> Your dyslexic brain is made, yeah. it's made it's for this. Yeah. It's like doing that. Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and your chances, the outs and I <laughs> your chances of getting this are as good as anybody else <laughs> because it's it's something where we're finding ourselves in uncharted territory. Well, it's great fun. It's great fun, I tell you. Yeah, you've got to be brave. Yeah, you, oh, be, be brave, brave yeah, fearless. Yeah, exactly. And we'll have a laugh, you know. Now, be aware that there is a bottom to this. Try not to go all the way to the bottom because it's going to get flat. And then there's nothing. We're not going to have the tools to go into the wood. Right? So try not to go that far down. Yeah. And do it quickly for two reasons. One, because we're going to have to fill it with plaster and let the plaster set. And two, it's going to dry out too quickly otherwise. Any more questions? No. Are we doing either 